You're listening to Alabama Tradition with Ryan Fowler and Martin Houston on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. You need parts? O'Reilly Auto Parts has parts. Need them fast? We've got fast. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Product availability. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. So we welcome you into Alabama tradition. Uh, Martin Houston uh, doing a little youth basketball, and uh, we're going to talk with one of his teammates, William Barger, going to evaluate the offensive line. We're taking phone calls. Phone line's completely jammed up on a Tuesday in Tuscaloosa. We had Bart, uh, Ed Barrett Jones on earlier, had Mike Dettilia. If you missed any of those, Tide109.com, Tide109.com. Uh, we're going to continue talking more Alabama Crimson Tide football, and uh, we'll, we'll – uh, Get into it here. Let's go to Joe in Red Bay. Joe, good afternoon. You're in the game. Roll Tide. Roll, Ryan. Roll and, Tide, and, Joe. And you know what? I've been watching the uh, great play of the Alabama-Auburn game, and I just can't get enough of it. I mean, because we ripped their hearts out. They, 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 they probably still got fans sitting in the stands right now. And I don't know why they that they thought they had a chance with us to start with. But what's going to be even better is because we're going to do this with those mangy little puppies in Georgia. I mean, every, every time we play them, we whoop them worse and worse each year. And I don't know why they think they even have a chance. In fact, I, I, I don't know how, but some of them got my phone number oh, and no. texted me back. And some guy texted me. I don't even know who it was, but it was a George area coach. And said, Kirby. Puppy feet. It was Kirby. And so I texted him back, lick elephant foot. Is that what you told him? Well, I mean, he told me to lick dog foot. So, you know, I, I got a puppy. If I want to lick his foot, I'd do it. But, you know, he ain't fixed to whoop me. I got you. I got you. So now are you confident that Alabama can get the job done? Hey. Bet your house on if, if, if bet your house on it, Ryan. Okay, I'm not gonna bet the it, house. I, I'm I'm not. I mean, I don't have. Well, a, if you lose, if you lose, I'll throw a sleeping bag out. You sleep. I know, the back of I know, throat. I know. But I mean, I don't. My box is not big enough. If I could find one of those nice refrigerator boxes, I'd be in business. But I'm not betting the house when I don't have a box. So if I can find a box, I, I might bet the house. But until then, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep uh, just plugging along here. Well, I mean, that's talking about. That, I'm know, nervous. A used old camper do for them. That's probably what they live in, anyhow. You know, we do it for recreational, but they do it for, you know. I, yeah, and but, I, and I but, got but another now, thing. We grow better. I want to see. We grow better quickly. pieces in Georgia, though. I want to see real quickly. You know, we talk about Kirby as a verb. You know, third and Kirby, Kirbying. Is Kirby going to Kirby? Because Kirby, go back to the first year. He, he Kirby'd against Vanderbilt. Other years, they he's had Alabama at, at opportunities, and you know Kirby's going to Kirby. I want to see real quickly where they are with third down conversions. I just want to see where the dogs are. Just and, and I don't know this number, so I'm going to look it up real quick. Ooh, wow. Okay. Well, I want I want to see us give him a wedgie. Uh, less. You'd have to reach down low because he's short. Wow. Wow. Kirby's not Kirbying anymore on third downs. He used to give up. It'd be like second, first down, stop him. Second down, stop. Third down, they pick it up when he was here. He's up to eighth in the country. Only a 31.58% conversion percentage for the opponents. Wow. Best is eighth in the country, number one in the SEC. All right. Well, you know, when I look at Georgia... It's it, it's like somebody that 
goes around and whoops everybody but the big dog. Sure. Like like they've done something, but they still like, you know, like we're not Vanderbilt. We're not South Carolina. We're not Missouri. Right. We're not Clemson. That's losers this year. They, yeah, thank the Lord. You know, they're, yeah. they're running. All right, Joe, give me a score. So they, so they whoop all these little teams and then say, well, and try to pump their, you know, muscles well, now, up like they're going to beat us. Don't be making fun of those little teams because Auburn would be uh, like three and six if, if it wasn't for those little teams. I mean, you, you know what we've done, the Auburn? They thank God for Akron, we, Alabama we, State, and Georgia State. Well, we're not going to uh, play like we did with Auburn. Yeah, I right. mean, when you got oh, a no, bigger fish to fry, you yeah. don't know what you're going to play. All right. Joe, give me a score. I'm going to say, you know, I, I'm going to give Georgia some credit because they got a defense, but I still think we're going to score more than anybody did this year on. I'm going to say 30 to 20. Alabama? Alabama. And I'm going to say 155 yards. Cause, because All right. We're going to be able to run the ball on them. 30, and I 20, think Brian Robinson just may be back. All right. I'm, I'm working my sources. I'm. I text Coach a while ago. We'll see if he says anything. We'll, and sometimes he'll respond. Sometimes he don't. He's not great at texting. Hey, text we're going to – we're going to – we're going to – if anybody okay. knows Kirby Smart, it's Nick Saban. And there's – We probably, don't know – he don't know can, Brian, you know, Wikipedia. But he knows Kirby Smart. That's right. Joe, thank you, man. Roll Tide. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Roll Tide. Joe, Red Bay, Karen, Tuscaloosa. Karen, good day. You're in the game. Hey, Ryan. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Now we got a little time to talk. Last night I was okay. having a, I was having and a, hurry we had to a hurry. little bit. Yeah. I know. So you're I welcome know. to go back and finish anything that you wanted to talk about. Uh, well, yesterday. I mean, all I was saying was I am getting very um, – since the Auburn game and when I went back to work on Monday, you know, I've been called, you know, delusional and um, – the, you know, I need to take my crimson glasses off and all that. But, you know, I never gave up hope during the Auburn game. I knew we could do it. I didn't know if we would do it. Just like when I was at the Texas A&M game, I knew we could do it. I didn't know if we would do it. And as it turned out, of course, we didn't, you know, at the last minute. But it was a last-minute field goal, and they won by three points. I just never, you know, it, I never gave up hope. And... They got it together because, you know, good teams do that. And I've said all along, Auburn is not that good of a team because as many errors as we made, as many mistakes as we made, they didn't capitalize on any of them. Or, well, they did. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, they only scored 10 points. And it's like if if they had been so good – we made so many mistakes, they would have run up the score on us to where we would have never been able to dig ourselves out of a hole. You know what I'm saying? I do. And so, no, I do. Yeah. And, I, and, and that was my first thing was, you know, and then you look at the stats, and, you know, the, the stats were not all that great at the end of the game. And we did what we had to do to win the game, and good teams find a way to win most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. Okay, so I'm not going to give you my score, and then I'm going to explain why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. Um, I'm going to say 32 Alabama, 13 Georgia. 32 13. You want to go ahead and give me the rushing yards? Yes, I'm going to say 219. Okay, 219. All right. And and I'm saying Alabama is going to have 32 points. But I think our defense will score at least 14 of those points oh, wow. and possibly 24 of those points. Because I think, even though our defense has had problems, you said it a while ago, your boy Pete, um, you know, I think our defense looks good against Auburn most of the time. And Georgia's offense has not impressed me at all. Their defense has scored a lot of points, and I don't remember what game it was. It was three to nothing, I think. And then I think, or they had only scored three points, and then their defense came back and within like two minutes had scored like two or possibly three touchdowns. But the whole rest of the game, they never, the offense only scored 10 points. And I don't think their offense 
I think their defense has been winning the games for them. And so I think our defense is going to greatly contribute to helping us beat Georgia. Let us let me add something to this, Karen. Let, let's go back to Stetson mm-hmm. Bennett. I'm sure he would love to be able to prove it wrong. But mm-hmm. allow me to walk back when Georgia came here. And I know it's a different atmosphere of playing – you know, in a friendly stadium like that, when but right. when they came here, let me read you Stetson Bennett's line. He was okay. eighteen of forty, two sixty nine. Mm-hmm. So he was less than he's about forty seven, forty eight percent. I guess is uh, what that would right. be. Um, he had two touchdowns, but he also had three interceptions. His quarterback rating was sixty two point eight. And one of the things that Alabama did to him is the defensive lineman got their hands up. That was something yep. that they had worked on all week. And remember how many batted balls he had? I mean, it exactly. was. Exactly. Yes. So if you want to, you know, make that case, I think you bring up a really good point. But, you know, how quick will Kirby go to JT Daniels? I don't know. But I don't, I, what I'm telling you is. Yeah. No, I, no, I. Played, you know, cause, he's been playing in some of these games and their offense is just, their defense has carried them in every game they've played this year. I, I, for the most part. Okay, except for like when they blew out Vanderbilt, you know, 65 to nothing or whatever it was. Okay, but I'm telling you, their their offense is not that good. And I think our defense is uh, is going to be, even with the problems we've had, I think our defense is the best one that they have faced. And I think that our offense can, if they can get it together and do some of the stuff that y'all were, you were talking about a couple of callers ago about you know do some of the stuff that we haven't seen this year and you know do that I think I I mean I really do you know it may not happen that way it's like I've told you I have said all year it might be Georgia's year and I yes I'm I'm a Bama fan to the marrow of my bones and I have been my whole life but I know we're not going to win them all and I mean I get that I know we're not going to win every game and if it's Georgia's year, it's Georgia's year, okay? But the way that the Georgia fans are acting, they might as well not play the game. They might as well not play in the playoffs. They just need to go on to Indianapolis and pick up that trophy sure. because it's a done deal. Well, and you almost and, wonder if that – and I asked Barrett Jones this earlier. Does that come back to hurt these guys? Because all week they're going to be told, you know, coming up here in just a couple of minutes, they'll be releasing this poll, uh, and we'll yeah. see where Alabama is ranked at. And tonight – They'll be talking about Alabama. It's just got to walk through, right? Uh, just walk mm-hmm. through, or Georgia's got to walk through Alabama. And mm-hmm. how do they deal with that? Almost, yeah. Well, almost, and and I mean, I dare say that will look past us to the playoff. It's almost like you know how Alabama has gotten into some games, and they said, "Oh, well, we looked past them because we're looking past them to the next game or whatever." And and I had heard now whether it's true or not, I don't know. That a couple of years ago, or excuse me, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago or whatever, Kirby's quote-unquote halftime speech to his team was, this is our, you know, you know, expli- sure. you know, he, he was cussing. This is our year. This is our year. This is our year. Now, he learned a lot from Nick Saban, but I don't think Nick Saban would ever get up in a locker room and tell his team, this is our year. We're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's one of those things. If they're if that's true, and Kirby is make, making that team believe we're invincible, this is our year. That's dangerous. That's sure. a dangerous place to be. It will be because it will be. you know, on any given, my daddy, God rest his soul, on any given day, I don't care what the record is, anybody can get beat in college football, and you know that is that's a fact. And that's the way that it is. And just like Nick said last week, they're not professional players. You know, they are college students and all that kind of stuff. And I just, you know, but. Hey, Karen, I, I got I got to get to squeeze in a couple more okay. calls right here. I really appreciate okay. it. I got you. 32, 13, 2, 19, Karen. Yes. All right, Ryan. Roll Tide. And I'll talk to you Friday, hopefully. Are you going to have a parlay? Oh, we will. Yeah, we'll, we'll do our okay. best. Yeah, we'll, we'll put some okay. things in there. Uh, thank you, Karen. And okay, uh, I bye. Think, uh, right back to you. Thank you. And uh, let's go here to Keith in Carolina. Keith, good afternoon. You're in the game. Good evening, Brian. How you doing, my man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry I dropped the call. Already. That was my fault. I... No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. Um, 
we are getting our teams right here, so I'm going to jump in at some point and give you the top four teams. But uh, I'm, I'm standing here watching it myself. So. All right, Georgia number one, Michigan number two. Uh, we'll see where they put Alabama uh, in this spot. So it's Georgia one, the Michigan Wolverines at two, and we'll see where they put Alabama here in just a couple of seconds. Um, I'll probably do reverse order and start and tease us a little bit. But uh, Georgia number one. Yeah, that's probably- Michigan after the win against Ohio State. Oh, how the times have changed. The love for the Big Ten. I love them. Uh, we're three. Alabama's number three. Alabama's number three. So uh, there you go. Georgia, yeah. Michigan, Alabama at number three. And uh, we'll see what they do at that number four spot. But, uh, Keith, go ahead and continue. We, we've, we found out where Alabama is. No, that's fine. I, I was, I'm, I'm watching on television just like you are. I, just, I ain't been home too long. But – uh you know, I, last Saturday, I, I tried to call. I didn't get a chance to call in yesterday, but uh, I was upset Saturday. I didn't think we – but then by the end of the game, I was tickled pink. I think the one thing we did Saturday that uh, a lot of people may have thought or didn't or didn't – let me rephrase that. A lot of people don't realize what happened Saturday was our team jailed. The defense – trust the offense, and the offense trusts the defense. They're like a two brothers that's been feuding all summer, and then they are best friends by the time school starts. I'm telling you, the attitude is 90% of what you're doing. Plain and simple. What I saw of them the last few minutes, and when Jordan, when Jordan Battle pulled Tank out, out of bounds, I actually started smiling. I said, mm. these boys are going to turn it around. They're going, they, they, they're going to do what needs to be done. I was actually excited when I saw that. I knew I knew they, they were, everybody were on the same page. Cincinnati's the number four team uh, in college football. Yeah. So you got Georgia, Michigan, Alabama, and number four, Cincinnati. So, uh, and then Oklahoma State's number five. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So. They're, but, they're, they're setting this up. Listen, we, we have one way to get in the playoffs. Uh, well, I mean, I say one way. I mean, there's multiple ways. But you look at uh, Alabama needs to take care of business. Well, Man, I, that would be a I, long I afternoon. Take, and, I, and I think we will take care of business. I really do. I, 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 I'm nervous, kind of a nervous, excited. Uh, if we do what I know we can do, we'll beat Georgia. Because I have to – several things. Right now, at this very moment, if you had to choose two offenses to go against, which offense would you be scared of? George's offense or Ole Miss's offense? Which one would scare you more? Which offense? Yeah. Oh, I think it's Ole Miss. Okay. And and we played some of our best football in that first half. I mean, yeah. So I, I, no, I agree we didn't play a complete game. I'm not saying we did. I'm not delusional. But I'd rather who's, – who's Georgia's offense? Who, who, what offense has Georgia, has Georgia faced all year? Nothing that impresses – nothing well, that and, scare and, up. and Barrett and I were talking about this earlier. I guess if you want to talk about – Yeah, a, I caught that part. Yeah. A passing offense, um, I think you'd probably have to go Tennessee uh, when you look at passing offense. I can quickly scan through uh, some of their stats. Alabama's ranked seventh in the country in passing offense – uh, quickly scanning through. I mean, you got to go way down to find Georgia's as far as so there is some money to be made. Uh, there. Oh yeah. So I I go. And it, my heavens, man! I mean, I'm already down in the 40s. I'm just quickly scanning the teams that they've played. Uh, Florida, 39th, 39th is is, yeah. is where they're at. Yeah, that's that's the point I'm making. And I mean, Florida's not going to scare you too much on on the throwing the football. No, but if you remember the first half of that game. If Florida hadn't shot their stuff in the foot, they were moving the ball. They were moving the ball. Now, Florida made them, you know, they imploded all year. The best game they played all year was against us, by bar none. And, uh, but anyway, I, I think, I think if our defense shows, if our defense plays like they're capable of playing, like they did this past Saturday, our offense shows up. I know our offensive line is, We've got some issues. But I swear to you that last minute and 36 seconds, they come together. They come, And I think it 
and you remember you you were talking earlier in the day how Saban was trying to build confidence in the team, build confidence in the team, you know, build them up, praise them, make them feel good. Saturday, take care of all of that. I used to, you know, I've, we've talked before. I used to really step the biggest, you know, all that's ninety percent mental. Physical part's nothing. It's the mental part. If you have confidence, you can get it done. Sure, plain and simple. If you know you, if you tell yourself, and you know, in and your maybe mind, that's what Nick Saban has tried all year long. Uh, exactly, to get... that's the point of making. That's the point of making. Saturday, when they played the worst game offensively they played all year, and they still won the game. Now they have no doubt they can do whatever they set their mind to do. If they gotcha. set their mind to beat Georgia, they will beat Georgia. Plain and simple. And gotcha. I'll get off here. Thank you. I'll... Keith, give me a score. Okay, I'll say. Originally, it was 34-24. Johnny from Coleman got it. Let's, i tell you what. Let's do 37-27, Alabama. Uh, 37, Georgia 27. All right, Bama rushing yards. 129. 37-27, 129. Keith, I appreciate you, man. Thank you, Ryan. Roll tide. Hey, right back to you. We'll go to William Barger. We'll talk offensive line play coming up in just a couple of minutes. Tied at 100.9, the home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. You need parts? O'Reilly Auto Parts has parts. Need them fast? We've got fast. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Product availability. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Hello, I'm Martin Houston, and while I get really excited about football season, I love the holiday season even more. Merry Christmas from the Tide 109 family and the Martin Houston Show. Roll Tide. You're listening to Tide 100.9. Are you in the holiday spirit? Check out Tuscaloosa's Home for the Holidays on Nick 97.5. All Christmas songs, 24-7. It's Aussie having some fun. Have some fun, man. Talking Alabama Crimson Tide football on Alabama Tradition with Martin Houston and Ryan Fowler in Tuscaloosa on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Following William Barcher, we've been full pretty much the majority of the day. I see you, Elias, uh, Gavin down in Dolphin Island, and Dio here in Tuscaloosa. You guys just hang right there for just a couple of minutes. We're going to talk to William Barcher, then we'll get back to phone calls, and that'll be our final few minutes of the program. You know, if you're heading over to Atlanta, let me tell you about the Sheraton Atlanta Hotel. It's a great recommendation. We stayed there a couple of years ago with the media hotel for the national championship game. Uh, I'll put the link up on both of my social networks, but if you're heading to Atlanta, for that SEC championship game, newly renovated Sheraton Atlanta Hotel just seven blocks away from the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, just a couple of blocks away from all types of different restaurants, shopping, downtown attractions, nightlife. Alabama fans, uh, go there on the, on the link, and it, you can really save a significant discount. You also get breakfast for two at a discounted parking. Uh, I checked it a couple of minutes ago. I think it's $129 uh, for the night. I don't think you'll find anything any closer to that. But you got to mention right here that you heard about it. You got to go to that special link that we put up on uh, both my Twitter account and my Facebook. So if you'll find me there, uh, get a big discount if you're heading over to Atlanta. Let's go to William Barger, uh, former offensive lineman at the University of Alabama. Hey, William, I hope all is well. Welcome to the game in T Town. Hey, Ryan, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. We've we spent a lot of this week celebrating, but uh, we're also looking ahead. I'd like to do both with you and uh, <laughs> look at. Uh, there's been no celebrating in my household since Saturday. I can promise you that. Okay. 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 But I just want to go back to, uh, the iron bowl, just your big takeaway, the way that you watch the game and the way you evaluate it. I mean, I thought the defense, 
um, probably turned in their best performance, you know, of the year. Um, you know, being able to limit Auburn, you know, to the to the small amount of yards rushing that they did, and you know, 130, 140 yards passing, whatever it ended up being. I, I thought they played lights out. You know, um, you saw Byron Young really step up. You saw Demarco Hellum step up. I mean, you know, Will Anderson turned in his you know normal off the charts performance, but. On the other side of the ball, it wasn't quite so rosy. Um, you know, that's that's probably one of the worst offensive line performances I've seen since the, you know, honk if you sack Brody game, you know, back down there under Mike Shula. All right. Can you take us deeper into what went wrong uh, for that offensive line, in your opinion? Well, I mean, you know, it, 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 when you – you want to talk about the second half, you got the third team center out there and the second team right tackle. And, you know, that always causes problems. I mean, you know, you saw, you know, where the left guard was basically having to slap the center on the shoulder to, you know, tell him when to snap the ball. It just, it just messes up the, the chemistry and the continuity and the communication. But, you know, it, it, uh, you know, it was it was just a, a rough performance. You know, they they didn't do real well. You know, run blocking or pass blocking, and um, you know, when when you're basically talking about, you know, now we're you know staring down the barrel of, of December first tomorrow. It's uh, whereas you know, I think in past seasons, Ryan, um, you know, the 2012 offensive line, you know, turned in that Western Kentucky performance where I think they had five or seven sacks. Um, you know, I think DJ Fluker got credited with four or five of them, but by the, by the end of that year, when they played Notre Dame, that was one of the best offensive lines in college football. You know, some Alabama fans still consider that the, the gold standard. It's not for me. Um, you know, the, the, the 2019 or the 2020 Alabama offensive lines, the gold standard for me, but, and, and, you know, there again, um, I, I think you kind of have to you know, temper your expectations a little bit. I mean, there was so much talent up front last year. I mean, look, the only reason why Landon Dickerson went early in the second round was because of that knee injury. So you basically had three first-round draft picks last year on that offensive line. You know, right now you got one, you know, a a, a top-five pick and Evan Neal. And at at this stage in the game, you don't really know if the other four are going to make an NFL roster. Well, and and you look at, just, I mean, Emilio Ikewer, I don't know if he's had a great season. I just, when I watch him play, and I think you've pointed this out, uh, some of the pressure uh, that they receive up the middle, uh, I mean, they're they're whipping our guards, too. I mean, it's not just tackles. I know we pick on tackles because it's kind of the obvious, but, uh, you know, they're, they're coming up the middle with us, too. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, there was one play, um, you know, where, where you know, the, the right tackle got beat. And, you know, Bryce, you know, when that happens, when, you know, when a, when a, you know, an edge guy gets beat, you know, the quarterback looks to step up into the pocket, you know, the, the two tackles are responsible for the width of the pocket, the center and the two guards are responsible for the depth. And, you know, Bryce had nowhere to step up to the center had been blown back three or four yards into the, into the backfield. So there was nowhere for him to escape to. Uh, But yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, one particular guy, I mean, you, you take, you know, Evan Neal out of the equation and we could spend hours discussing the other four. William, do you think it is a technique? Do you think it, cause you know, I heard coach Saban yesterday. He said they lack aggressiveness and I'm going, man, how can you play in the trenches? If you lack that characteristic, I mean, he said that yesterday in a press conference, I'm going lack of aggressiveness. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that make up a good offensive line, but I think you got to have that and um, the lack of attention to detail. I think he talked about lack of focus in multiple press conferences. I mean, is it a technique? I mean, because the talent's there, right? I mean, is, is these guys talented enough to get the job done? Well, I mean, I think what you've seen happen, Ryan, is there was a couple of, and I don't think it was in back-to-back classes, but you, you, you really need to sign four or five offensive linemen in every recruiting class because there's going to be misses. It's it's a very, you know, tough position to evaluate that, that you know to translate it from the high school level to the SEC level. 
And I know there was one class where they only signed two offensive linemen, and maybe the year after the next, they only signed three. So they, you know, that, that's basically what happened to LSU's program. Um, you know, they just didn't sign enough numbers on an annual basis, you know, at the offensive line position. And, you know, it finally caught up with them in the last couple of years. And I, and I think to a certain extent, you know, that's happened to Alabama. You know, if you look at what they brought in last year, um, you know, several, you know, high quality, highly rated offensive tackle prospects. But as a fan base, you know, we, we've been spoiled with, you know, an Andre Smith and a Cam Robinson and a Jonah Williams. You know, even though Jedrick Wills didn't start as a true freshman, he, he could have. Um, so, and, and, you know, those aren't the norm. You know, the Evan Neals, you know, Alex Leatherwood, those aren't the norms. Um, you know, typically it takes a couple years especially if you sign, you know, these guys that have the, you know, the wingspan and the length um, to play left tackle or right tackle, a lot of times those guys, you know, need some time in the strength and conditioning program to get big and strong enough to play those positions. And, you know, I, I do think they made up, you know, a little bit for it in last year's class, but, you know, those guys need time to develop. You know, one of them was injured in high school. You know, the other one only played offensive line for two years. Um, so it's, it's just, I guess for, for lack of a better word, just kind of bad timing. I was going to ask you because you evaluate a lot of high school, uh, kids, uh, coming in and, and around the, this region, are you seeing the same quality, uh, for, remove Alabama out, out of the, are you seeing the same quality of an offensive lineman as you've seen in the past around high school football? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's. It's different, Ryan. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to name any names, but I was having this conversation. Uh, I guess it was, you know, going into Jonah Williams' junior high school season with a former Alabama offensive line coach, and I was like, you know, Coach, how, how do you evaluate these guys, you know, in high school that are playing, you know, in, in all these spread offenses where they operate out of a two point stance? You know, I, you know, how do you, how do you you know, get that translated into, you know, third and one, fourth and one, where they've got to get in a three-point stance and generate power at the point of attack. And, you know, his answer was, look, if we see a guy that can do it out of a two-point stance, we feel pretty comfortable that they can do it out of a three-point stance. But that's one thing that I think has, you know, made it a little bit more difficult, especially if you're running an offense where, um, you know, you, you like to be balanced and, and, you know, run just as much as you pass. Um, you know, these guys have to be able to do it all. And, you know, when, when you're, when you're throwing the ball all over the field, you know, for, for three and a half quarters and all of a sudden you, you know, you want to go power and, and, you know, run some, you know, some stretch and some, you know, inside zone plays. Um, and those guys have to go from doing what they've been doing all day, which is pass blocking. It's, it's, it's the difficult task to transition into. William, I've, I've tried to answer this question the best way because a lot of people call up and they'll say, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? I don't think it's fair to evaluate Bill O'Brien right now uh, because it, up front, if you don't have those guys, it, it's – yeah, I mean, he's done a great job with Bryce Young. Uh, you've had injuries all over the running backs. Uh, you know, you're breaking in new wide receivers. I know John Mechie's played a lot of football here, but uh, how would you evaluate if somebody asked you to evaluate Bill O'Brien? Totally agree with you, Ryan. And, and you know, I, I've even painted this picture since Saturday. You know, when, when you when you start talking about the, the last drive of, of regulation and then you go into overtime, you're, you're running an offense as, as the play caller, and you've got the fourth or fifth team running back in the game. you got the third team center. you got the second team right tackle and the best wide receiver standing over there next to uh, Coach Saban on the sideline. Um, but but I, I think the, the there's two things I'll say about this. The fact that Bryce Young is even in the in in the running for the Heisman Trophy, and the fact that Bill O'Brien um, has been able to do his job to the point to where right now I think they sit at number five in scoring offense is amazing. With the struggles that they've had to scheme around with the injury situation and, you know, certainly not the, the best offensive line of the Nick Saban era. 
All right, so here's the million-dollar question. Uh, when you look at the dogs, uh, how can you cover up uh, or you know, help that offensive line uh, feel more comfortable uh, going into this Georgia game? What can you do to, to maybe you know, put them in a position to have success? Well, I mean, I think if you're being honest, you know, as an Alabama fan, I mean, it's it's a glaring mismatch on paper. Um, you know, their front seven, you know, versus the Alabama offensive line um, is is at least on paper going into the game. I think you know one of the biggest mismatches of the season. Um, you know, do, do, does anybody honestly think that whoever the center is can you know handle Jordan Davis one on one without some help? Um, you know, even without, you know, Adam Anderson being available for this game, they've still got excellent edge rushers. Um, I, I wouldn't, you know, I don't know how much money Bill O'Brien's getting paid, but I'm, I'm sure he's, you know, not sleeping real well this week. <laughs> yeah, trying to come up with uh, everything. And, you know, we're, signing, we're we're trying to find out if Brian Robinson, you know, was able to do anything in practice. Probably not, uh, but we, we'll find out. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what you do with – you know, if he, he's not able to go because, you know, you talk about rushing a football, but look at trying to pick up that blitz packages or, or just even pressure. Forget about blitzes. I mean, just pressure. Well, I, th- th- there's the, the $64,000 question, Ryan. Now, y- if you're Kirby smart and, you, you, you know, you're going into this game, he he likes to, you know, kind of play things man manned up. He, he is not – you know, real big on blitzing and, you know, because of the schedule that he's played and, and the opponents, the offenses that he's faced, he hasn't really had to. Um, but, you know, if you're Kirby Smart and you're Dan Lanning and you've seen, you know, the success that Texas A&M and Tennessee and LSU and Arkansas and Auburn had, you know, doing those situational blitzes or at times that's, you know, three downs worth of them. Do, do you go away from what got you to Atlanta in the first place by, you know, just playing your base package because you're so talented and, you know, go with the recipe that's been successful, um, you know, against Alabama since the Texas A&M game? Um, or, 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 you know, do you stick with what got you to Atlanta? I think that'll be real interesting to see how that unfolds Saturday. Does, and I've asked you this before, uh, but I think it's worth going back and mentioning uh, with what Kirby has been able to do in Athens. And, you know, you go back a couple of years ago, uh, 2016 Alabama had a great defense. They, they've had productive defenses in the past. Does this flip that cycle back that maybe defense gets a little bit more attention? Because, I mean, I keep hearing names of uh, people that are looking for jobs, and I'm hearing some defensive guys mention uh, sometimes they're not getting the job, but uh, you know, like Dave Aranda out of Baylor, uh, you, you start looking at names that are. Do, do we cycle back around to the defensive side of the football because Kirby's kind of proved that we can play late defense uh, in current college football? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think Kirby's probably the 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 best you know representative of this. You know, he's a guy that when he was at Alabama, you know, in his first couple of years at Georgia, he, he's always kind of struggled against the you know, hurry up, no huddle, RPO spread teams. Um, you know, that that changed a little bit this year. And, uh, you know, I think it changed because he's done such a good job of recruiting. And um, I'm, I'm sure he wished he had a mulligan with one, one guy named Will Anderson, but sure. he still has some really talented guys, um, you know, playing outside linebacker for him. And did you and, see and, what you know, Will, he has a, Will said about Kirby Smart? Uh, I guess the way that Georgia yeah. recruited him. Did you see some of that? Yesterday, now? did you see where Will Anderson was talking about Kirby Smart and the way they recruited uh, him? It didn't really show him a lot of interest. Did you? I mean, no, no. They 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 kind of slow played him and you know kind of tried to jump in there at the end if if my memory's correct yeah. and you know it was kind of too late by that point. Well, I just, but, as you were talking, I was like that was setting up on a tee with Will Anderson kind of telling us that little tidbit yesterday that uh, he wasn't even really heavily recruited by Georgia. That was kind of no, uh, no, no. He what and uh, you know that that was a. Uh, you know, a great evaluation, you know, by, by Nick Saban and, and the defensive coaches at the time, um, you know, and, and there again, Ryan, I mean, I think you're watching, you know, almost like Will Anderson 2.0 develop there on the other side of the, the defense from him and Dallas Turner, you know, he, he's got a chance, um, 
you know, whatever happens, you know, after Saturday, you know, actually, if they, if they win and they beat Georgia and they get into the, you know, the playoff, there'll be an extra game in the mix. If, if they don't, then it's Georgia and then whoever they play in a bowl game. But, you know, Dallas Turner has a chance to match Will Anderson's numbers last year as far as, uh, you know, sacks go. William, uh, who you thinks going to win? <laughs> I'm not answering that question. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to exercise my fifth <laughs> amendment right on that one. Okay. I mean, Ryan, I, mean, I got I mean, you. Ryan, right. honestly, we're, we're score prediction day today. And so it's been about, uh, I, it was, it started out 50, 50, uh, people picking Georgia and Alabama. Uh, it, it has flipped back to Alabama, but I would still say it's probably 65, 35, something like that. So, I mean, I'll say that I'll say this. I mean, I do think the, the Vegas line is, is where it needs to be. Um, you know, I, I think it'll take, you know, a flawless performance on offense, you know, no turnovers, um, you know, n- certainly not the level of penalties um, that you saw the team get. And, and you know, there again, the the play that, that you know, Emil Ikior got thrown thrown on Saturday in Auburn where his helmet got taken off. And I mean, what, what are you supposed to ask a player to do in that situation? Just fall down and, and you know, fake well, a hamstring injury. William, we got so many changes in football. This is like a two hour show. That stupid, uh, two point conversion overtime. That, that may be the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Ryan, I gotta be totally honest with you. I mean, I consider myself to have a, you know, decent football IQ. And I didn't even know that was how they were doing it. I'm like, can, can you just trot out there and kick a field goal and be done with it? Uh, <laughs> I, I had no idea that well, that's how did, the I overtime did, rules. I'm in the media business. I didn't even know it. I mean, I, I'm. Ple- <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I'm going. Uh, and and I'm I'm texting back and forth with a uh, with a current player and he a former player former player and he said, "What in the world are they doing?" I, I said, "Buddy, I ain't got a clue." I have no. I, I didn't either. So I, don't don't beat yourself up yeah, too bad. Uh, it was it was like uh, that was one of those changes that they slipped over, and we were talking about whatever. But uh, yeah, uh, hey, they keep making rules like that, and and, and this transfer portal, man, uh, it is it is going to, whew, Nick Saban, uh, you know, having to re recruit. That's going to become another conversation piece right there. He's going to have to re recruit some of these kids and keep them engaged. If not. Uh, and this is going to happen to all your big programs. But you'll get those guys back in the great sale for Nick Saban. He's had two transfers that have come in, and they've both been instant plug-and-play guys uh, with Williams and, right. and Henry Toa Toa. So, that, you know, you'll be able to sell it too. So, William, I appreciate you, man. I, I always enjoy Bye, the buddy. chats, man. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Talk to you soon. Absolutely. Former offensive lineman, national champion winning offensive line. I guess we can put uh, William on the – Dawson, don't like him either, List. Uh, just wanted to make sure. We'll continue with more of the game. Tide 100.9, the home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Hi. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A very pleasant afternoon with a sunny sky. Tuscaloosa size 65. Clear tonight with a low at 39. The warming trend continues tomorrow and Thursday. Lots of sunshine both days. The high tomorrow is 68. The high Thursday, 72. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's 55 degrees in Tuscaloosa. Hello, I'm Martin Houston, and I'm so excited about this time of the year because it represents not just football, but the season of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of Harvest Church and the Martin Houston Show, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and invite you to join Harvest Church on Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. where we're creating and enabling faithful followers of Christ. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the Martin Houston Show and Harvest Church. The host of the game, Ryan Fowler, and the host of the Martin Houston Show, Martin Houston, have combined to offer a show filled with in-depth analysis of Alabama football and more. Alabama Tradition broadcasts live on Tide 100.9 every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. and is available live and on playback on numerous affiliates around the Southeast. Check out alabamatradition.com for a list of affiliates as well as other great content. Couldn't get much more from 
All right, so we welcome you right back to the phones uh, here in Tuscaloosa. We're going to try to go through these as quick as we possibly can. Phone line's completely jammed up. The same thing we said at 2 o'clock as we open up the show. Let's go to Elias. Elias, good afternoon, man. You're in the game. Roll Tide, Ron. How you doing today? I'm good. You going over? What's that? Are you going over to Lina for the game? Uh, I will know for sure by tomorrow. I got you. I got you. I, I plan on it. <laughs> you know, tickets are really hard to come by. They're, they're not yes, as – Yes, they are. I mean, they're they're – expensive uh yes sir yes sir they are yes sir i think i lost about 10 years of my life from that game saturday i think we all did man <laughs> i think we all did and uh the the crazy part about it well not the crazy part about it, but the uh thing about it too that same day it was my wife's birthday so she said she had to say a prayer to the lord to say lord please let down win so i can enjoy my birthday dinner <laughs> i got you <laughs> I got you. I got you. Well, he answered. Uh, he answered. Yes, sir. He answered. So. Yes, yes, sir. He did. Uh, but I know you got other calls coming in. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you my score. Okay, go. I I have twenty eight twenty four Bama. Twenty eight twenty four Bama. Yes, sir. And rushing yards for your Alabama Crimson Tide. One zero eight. One zero eight. I got it, man. Thank you, Elias. Yes, yes, sir. And real quick before you go. Um, the easiest way to um, eliminate Georgia's defense, you got to go fast. Any defense, and that's all Bama had to do Saturday against Auburn Blitz. If you went fast, they didn't have time to get it to their Blitz package. So if you go fast, you eliminate what they're trying to do on defense, and it causes confusion. Well, think about when, real. think about when we've had dominant defenses around here, and think about up tempo. Really, is one of the starting points uh, to counter. Yes. Uh, Nick Saban and Kirby Smart's uh, defense. So, um, so you know, that's, it's, that's, 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 that's a good one point. Of the things we Ho- need to do. Hopefully, they'll do it. Elias, thank you, man. Yes, sir. Roll tight. Uh, right back to you. Uh, we'll go 205 342 Gavin, Dolphin Island. Gavin, good afternoon. You're in the game. Roll tide, Ron Feller. Roll tide. It's a great day to be alive. Thank you, brother. My gosh, I listen to you every single day of the year in the tractors, the farm, everywhere we go. But but I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I think Georgia, this coming Saturday, has a rude awakening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alabama is like every – we've accomplished pretty much every single game day. And, yes, Texas A&M was a loss. But we have done so well. Coach Saban's done a great job with these young players. I really believe – I feel this, that we're going to beat Georgia this coming weekend. And Georgia, I'm going to tell you what, <laughs> they're saying this is their year. We're going to, we're going to like, dissipate that. If that is not their year. We are going to beat Georgia this weekend. I don't know if, I don't know if the dog fans will, will be able to take it if we, if we beat these guys. I don't care about dog fans. I don't no, I don't either. Thing. I don't either. A few, yeah. callers, a few callers a year a while ago, Karen, oh, my gosh, Karen is like, well, of course, she's so sweet, but. She said it all, and if you just look back and listen to her tape, that was amazing what she said. And you know, Joe from Red Bay, oh yes, Joe from Red Bay, we like some Joe. And Dawson, even Dawson came through with wow, flying colors. Got it. But I know you need to go. Yep. I will say one more thing here at the Sheraton Hotel in Atlanta. It's amazing. We, um, I was an orthopedic trauma rep for thirty years. Oh. I've always farmed, but I was a rep and. We had three national sales meetings at that Sheraton. It it's, was amazing. It's super. Yeah, it is. What it is. is yes, sir. All right, real quick. Here we go. Thank you. Score, Alabama, 25-19, 140 okay. yards. 140. I got it, Gavin. Thank you, man, for yes, listening sir. to us down in Dolphin Island. We appreciate it, man. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you, Gavin, Dolphin Island. Uh, let's go to D.O. D.O., good afternoon. You're in the game. Hey, Ryan. How you doing? I'm good, man. I hope you are, too. Yeah, I've been trying to get in a while. Then I've had some things I need to do, but uh, at least I got in two times. I had a uh, drop call here, so you didn't get to broadcast that. Okay, good, uh, good. Yeah, I didn't. That's always terrible when I have to do <laughs> au.edu, but uh, I'm glad you got yeah, back I, in. I appreciate it. Uh, well, we're going to find out if uh, Kirby's been uh, using a uh, – a real dagger or a rubber dagger this weekend, maybe. We'll find out if he can do any good. Uh, my hopes and thoughts are, hey, we're going to beat him. Well, I think any time you got Nick Saban on your sidelines, you feel like that that, that you have yep. the advantage. Um, yep. 
you know, if that's you, right. Uh, just the the decisions. I mean, you know, that personality of that Nick Saban team. It was the same thing evident against the Iron Bowl. Is uh, you know, when a lot of us were mailing it in, uh, those guys were not. So that's the play to the last whistle, play to the last second. So that's right. And uh, you know, we we've been over there before. Same situation. They had us by the throat and still didn't come out with a win. We got the win. And you know that's got to – and Kirby was getting so irritated at people asking that question on the press conference. So, hey, Dio, give wow. me a score real quick. Okay, 31-17. Okay. Total. 95 yards rushing. All right, 31-17, 95. Dio, thank you, man. Thank you, buddy. Uh, okay. Let's go to Pat. Pat, quickly here. Ryan, Ryan. Uh, one, uh, 149 on rushing yardage. And we're going to go 28 to 17, Alabama. 28 17. Martin Houston been coaching you up in the morning. Is that what it is? Yes, sir. Is he confident? <laughs> I, have, I have not had lunch with Martin. My, my, well. Mar- Martin is extremely confident. Martin's always confident. Now you say the Minister of Defense. And uh, we will be playing defense. And, uh, and Coach Saban's going to have a uh, surprise. On being able to run the ball against Georgia, watch and see. That's why I'm saying 149 yards. Got gotcha. you. Are you excited? I you am. Excited? Um, I'm excited. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I, you, I you, heard, you heard they, Dawson being mean been, to me earlier, I didn't know you? they giving you a hard time, and I and I heard the preacher. You, hey, the preacher is lucky that you let him on the show. I mean, you know, he's just. Hey, I mean, all I asked show. the preacher it's, about. It's not, a, it's not our show. It's his, it's your show. Well, but I I, <laughs> I welcome you guys, but. I just tried to remind him that he picked fifty six to six. He was a little off last yeah, week. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't understand yeah. Dawson not not having uh not not having. Hey, it's, hey, it's, how do you say what did Coach Saban say? Decon. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. You know, got I mean, it. Good lord. Hey Pat, have let a blessed me, day, Ryan Fowler. Let me get one more call in here. Thank you, Pat. We appreciate Thank you, you man. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, let's go, Mitchell. And Mitchell got about a minute and fifteen seconds. Roll. All right, Georgia thirty one. I mean Georgia thirty four. Alabama 31. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Georgia 34, Alabama 31. My sister's drinking the Kool-Aid, and we'll have 118 yards of rushing, Ryan. Roll Tide. Dead gummit, Mitchell. Got it. (laughs) Are we next instead, Mitchell? Are we next? We are next. (laughs) We are next. Goldberg, Goldberg, and the Georgia Bulldogs, and us were all next. <laughs> all right, see you guys. Thanks. We've had more people. We'll do a uh, big show tomorrow. We got a lot of guests that we'll uh, feature. We had a great conversation today. Uh, we had Barrett Jones, two-time All-American at the University of Alabama, also talked with William Barger a couple of minutes ago. Mike Detilier, if you missed any of those, Tide109.com. Remember, Martin Houston wakes you up tomorrow morning beginning at 6 a.m. I'm Ryan Fowler reminding you that we call this program the game of the only way that you can win the big game. The game of life is to walk daily with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good night, T-Town.